Episode 3 should have been more dream-induced introspection. It was pointed out to me last time that the whole thing, the whole thing with Rengoku was a dream, which made me really sad. And now Zenitsu. I'm really enjoying this. I'm enjoying this inner look at their psyches. It's happening in both this show and in Mob at the same time, which is sort of amazing. I <laughs> dreams of girls. I was right. I was right. I mean, it's not a big surprise, but... He dreams of a world where female characters can talk. Imagine that. Beware of putting her on your back and swimming there. Cannot recommend. Although, if you make it to the other side... You'll be extra bonded. He literally put her on his back, but didn't swim. Speaking of drowning... <laughs> he had to pull Inosuke into his drowning dream with him. I was talking about chasing rabbits too, this is so bizarre. I was... I was... Yeah, this is basically what I expected. Underling at 1 and 2. Panjiro! <laughs> so far, this dream is the one that speaks to me the most. I get it. But she's still gagged in this version. <gasps> the acorns! The greatest gift a man could give a woman. <laughs> Yes, that was everything that I wanted. Out of the four of them, three of them have happy dreams. Tanjiro is happy, but in a different way. It's got a pain in it. Deep pain. Ah, but there's more. Was that sequence a dream last episode? It really seems like it was, but I don't want to believe it because it was so great. I want it to be real. Right. Rengoku's father. He's sort of a big deal. I look up to Rengoku, or we look up to Rengoku as the audience, but Rengoku looks up to the father. It's a lineage of looking up. He must have been a great man. Oh. <laughs> I guess there are multiple ways you can be great. Oh. Oh. Well, it's coming from a place of pain. He's got a little brother. No. Apparently not. What went wrong? What happened? It would be really easy to take this to heart and be really distraught. But I feel like someone like Rengoku will actually help. Another parallel with Tanjiro, sort of? Having to be the head of the house for a younger sibling. Really stepping into that... That role. Man, really turning a negative into something beautiful. It didn't feel fake either. Felt real. Dream Eater, the Pokemon move. This is such a great device for backstory. She's... Wait, she, she's connected to Rengoku? They're sharing a dream? Thank you for the diagram. And that's we have to break because all humans are predictable and fragile. But as we know, Rengoku's core is burning hot. It's a flame that cannot be extinguished. There's the fire. It fits perfectly. The literal core? What do you do, stab it? Oh, he woke up! It's kind of brutal to watch. Yeah, this is sort of the most terrifying of the lot. This is so pleasant. After all this hell. What is Tundra's spiritual core going to look like? Let's go. Let's go. This family is just so damn cheerful. <laughs> this I'm great. He's sort of waking up. His mind is seeping in to the fantasy. He's fighting too. Yeah, it's like him being torn between this seductive, sort of safe, beautiful place and his current responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sub subconscious is screaming at him. Well, it was a nice try. 
No, but it's starting. He's waking up, even if maybe he doesn't want to. I guess she didn't have a ticket. <laughs> when you need your head pets, and you're gonna get them one way or the other. Tandro's head is too hard for that. He's gonna hurt yourself, yeah. <laughs> oh, he had to go to demon art. It's protective instincts kicking in. Ah, oh, yeah, it sucks, but I feel like it's more painful now that he knows it's a dream. It's probably on some level him trying to keep himself there. Right, of course. It's really sad to watch, but at the same time, it's a relief to see him actually processing it or openly grieving for it. The events that kicked off the show happened really quickly. And he went right from horror and devastation to, I'm going to do whatever it takes to save Nezuko. And that's sort of where he's been this whole time. But I feel like this reflection has been a long time coming. It was really admirable the way he handled it. I feel like most people in that situation, they just collapse, right? That's sort of it. There was no way he was going to be able to process that at that time. But he sort of saved himself and Nezuko for that matter, I guess, by picking a course of action that he felt was good. Like the only good he could see. But he deserves and I think needs the chance to grieve. And this probably is going to sound weird and insensitive. And obviously... You don't want anything bad to happen to his family. It would have been great if he lived a peaceful life. What happened was tragic, and I don't want to compare paths and say that one is better than the other, but in the events of the show, the way they happened, Tanjiro ended up being something that is really great, that he may not have become otherwise. And like I said, I don't say that to make light of what happened or to say that it justified the tragedy, but I just think it's a thing of life. It's like the one bright spot in tragedy or in momentous things that are life altering. If it doesn't destroy you, you've been forced to overcome a challenge and confront some of the true harshness of life. And in that sense, there's a part of you realized that may not have been realized. And in that sense, Tanjiro as a, as a person, as a character has been triumphant and inspiring. And this is him sort of choosing that. A path again. Yeah. Oh no, not the little kid. And this is his own guilt. I mean, he honors him every day with his actions. Man, that line hit me hard. A lot to be thankful for and a lot to be sorry for. It's true. This is going to take more than an ice pick. I see, his spiritual core is heaven. <laughs> it's clean. You haven't been watching the show. That seems about right. That seems to sum it up pretty well. Good thing he trained to use that in his sleep, huh? Who? Oh, it's, it's dad. What does he have to cut? Something holding him back? It's a big gamble. Um, let's hope this is not the Matrix rules. What? Oh, come on. I mean, it sort of works perfectly, right? Like, he has to cut himself because this is an introspective dream. And the only way out of this trap is with insight. And so he has to cut whatever it is tethering him to the way he currently thinks and what he currently believes. There's an insight he means to have, which probably means cutting away something sort of holding him back. Something that isn't himself. He could see a lot of his father in him. Insult. Interesting. Man, that was a very different episode for Demon Slayer. It's heartbreaking, honestly. It's hard to let go. It's hard to let go of like a, a image of the past, something you really cherish that ends. I mean, the that line sort of encapsulated it all for me. Like, there's a lot to be thankful for and there's a lot to be sorry for. I don't know which one hurts worse, <laughs> but they both hurt. They both sting. Loss is one of those elements of life that there's just no bargaining with, really. I think the only thing to do is what Tanjiro did, which is to sort of let it hit you, you know, in its full, terrifying painful beauty and then use it as energy of a kind you know it, things are there and then they're gone but you're still there and you have the next moment and you have what you want to focus on and i think if you don't let it crush you then 
It can be a source of strength. It can be a source of understanding and compassion and appreciation for beauty and even hope, you know, hope that moments like that will come again, even if they're never exactly the same. And that you'll be in a position that you can best honor them if you're lucky enough to experience them again and trying to live honorably while being true to yourself, even if that means letting go a little bit of what you have, letting go of sort of a sweetness, if that sweetness is an illusion. And who knows, maybe you can even do some good with that energy. <laughs>